Welcome to the Disney Scrapbook, where together we take a journey to explore Disney history from 50 years ago. My name is Nolan. We reached the final installment of my trilogy on the Walt Disney Studios 1971 family friendly film, But Noms and Boomsticks. Here we will take a look at the music and animation of the film. It's merchandising along with its restoration in 1996. If you missed part one on the history behind the making of the film, or part two on how it was made, I will leave a link to those videos in the description below and suggest that you start there. The Bayeux Tapestry that depicts the Norman invasion of England in 1066 is the inspiration behind the title sequence created by David Jonas. The same artwork was used on invitations for sneak previews to promote the film. The prolific songwriting duo of Richard M. and Robert B. Sherman wrote the amazing music and lyrics for this film. The majority of the music created for this film was written in the 1960s, when Walt Disney was still alive and during the period where the pair were employed as the Walt Disney Studios resident songwriters. After leaving the studios in 1968, they were called back in 1969 by Bill Walsh to complete work on two different projects. The Aristocats, released in 1970, and Red Knobs and Broomsticks. I believe that the only song to appear in the film that was written during this return time was the poignant song the Age of Not Believing, which resulted in an Oscar nomination in 1972 for Best Original Song. Red Noms and Boomsticks was first premiered at the Odeon Leicester Square, London, on October 7th, 1971. Missing the scene with the broom, where Eglantine Price, played by Angela Lansbury sings a step in the right direction, reportedly because the orchestration was not yet completed for the song. It was intended that the scene and song would be reinstated for the U.S. premiere and theatrical releases, but this never occurred. The original cast album on one of his records pre-released the film in May of 1971, and contained artwork by Disney's publicity artist, Bob Moore. Here, the song, A Step in the Right Direction, appears with full orchestration by Owen Costell. The album contained many of the songs and sections that were subsequently cut, including Almost all of the singing portion of With a Flare, Step in the Red Direction, which ended up being cut entirely from the film, England Time, which was severely shortened so that the Don't Let Me Down section was never included, and Portobello Road Street Dance served as four minutes of an original ten-minute scene. These cuts were taken following the London premiere as the film had been booked for its American debut at the Radio City Music Hall in New York as the Christmas attraction. This extravaganza was opened with a show from the Rockettes, Disney characters, and Santa, which was so long that the accompanying film had to be less than two hours. Consequently, Disney cut the film from its original virtual length of 2 hours and 17 minutes to 1 hour and 57 minutes. All of this editing and cutting meant that the hugely popular screen actor, Roddy McDowell, who played Reverend Rowan Jelk, was cut to only two scenes. 
weakening the human subplot of his desire to acquire Miss Price's property through marriage. The LP containing the original class soundtrack from the film comes in a gateful picture sleeve with photos from the film. The music was conducted and arranged by Owen Costell, who in 1972, along with the Sherman Brothers, received an Oscar nomination for Best Scoring Adaptation, along with Walter Schaff for Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. However, they all lost out to John Williams' adaptation of Fiddler on the Roof. A second LP containing songs from Benham's and Broomsticks was released in July of 1971. However, the songs were sung by Mike Sam's and his backing vocal group, the Mike Sam's Singers, all except for substitutionary locomotion, which is uncredited, but believed to be Judy Kahn. Reg Erba, in his book Mouse Tracks, suggests that this may be an audition take or a test recording. Whatever. It's a very interesting arrangement by Trudy Kalmwater that builds slowly and has additional lyrics. The same version appears on an extended play record printed in Canada, along with The Age of Not Believing, Eglantine, and Portobello Road. A Storyteller LP was released in August of that year using the same Mike Sam singer's recordings. It was narrated in first person by Dallas McKinnon from the perspective of Amelius Brown. Dallas McKinnon was the voice actor of the Fisherman Bear in the animated sequence on the Isle of Nabumbu, who was none too pleased when his catch proves to be a metal bedstead with five people aboard. And he quips, No people in allowed by order of the king. This section of the film excels in the way it seamlessly integrates live action and animation. Directed by Ward Kimball, the interaction between the live characters and the cartoon figures is impressive. The animation team, containing most of Ward's nine or men, used the Xerox method that of I worked perfected for 101 Dalmatians. Robert John Holt Horse, better known as Bob Holt, voiced Mr. Coldfish, and Lenny Weinwhip voiced King Leonidas and Secretary Bird, two very different characters. The characters on the cover of the Storyteller LP bear no resemblance to their film counterparts. However, a striking image is created that stands out when seen at record stores. Housed inside the cover is an 11-page fully illustrated book written by Jimmy Johnson and containing broad, bright illustrations typical of the art scene in the early 1970s. After recording this album, the great arranger, Salvador Tutti decided he would be better served working as a freelance record producer and arranger. Reluctantly, he said retired with Jimmy Johnson and Disneyland Records. This would prove to be the last collaboration as a team of the geniuses. Bill Walsh, Don DeGuardi, Richard Ehrman, Robert B. Sherman, Jimmy Johnson, and Trudy Kamarada. Two songs were written for the film but were never used. According to Richard Sherman on his interview on the DVD, the fundamental element was designed to be placed after a step in the right direction. When Eglantine Price confesses to the children that she has a shortcoming. As a witch, she has trouble riding a broom and performing basic spells. Solid Citizen was intended to be used on the Isle of Nabumbu to follow the story for the Eglantine Price was there to acquire the Star of Astaroth.
Instead, it was replaced by an animated soccer match. I believe that the soccer match was added for its humor and to showcase the special effects created by amalgamating the live action and animation. This disconnect may have happened because the director of the film, Robert Stevenson, gave Ward Kimball free reign to direct the sequence as he felt fit. The song, Nobody's Problem, was written with two sets of lyrics. The first version was meant to be sung by the three children, but was never recorded. And then there was a reprise of the song, sung by Eglantine Price after Mr. Brown leaves. I think that the children singing this song at the beginning of the film, when they are the last group of evacuees to be collected and are waiting for Eglantine Price to show up, would have made a very poignant moment for the film. Even though the film had been cut for a US premiere, when Walt Disney Productions re-released the film in 1979, they cut another 20 minutes off the film. Eliminating the songs, Portobello Road, Beautiful Blinding, originally written for a compass scene in Mary Poppins, and some parts of substitutionary locomotion. Along with shortening the scene of Amelia's Brown waiting at the train station, and deleting the whole scene where the necklace disappears, making the film 97 minutes long, but the plot had to follow. In 1996, in honor of the film's 25th anniversary, Scott McQueen as manager of Walt Disney Productions Restoration Library led a team to restore Ben Knobs and Broomsticks to its original virtual length. Using the original script and finding footage for 99% of the film, they managed to reinstate the following scenes. Before the old home guard song, where a guardsman named Mr. Woodenfield, played by Arthur Mallet, harasses Captain Greer while Mrs. Hobday tries to clear things up. Also, after the old home guard song, the sergeant asking for permission to dismiss the plane, where Carrie explains to Miss Price at the dinner table how they all became orphans, along with part of the dinner scene, where we are introduced to the foods that Miss Price has patriotically scavenged from the countryside. The scene where Reverend Jelk brings a letter to Miss Price's house and he wants to enter but is politely prevented. This is a scene that when it was cut made the film feel really disjointed. Where the children push the bed through the streets of London and the whole of the song with a flare was cut. Milt Larson the creator of the Magic Castle, a private club for magicians, and a friend of Richard Sherman, taught David Tomlinson the magic tricks and was rewarded with an uncredited cameo. At Mr. Brown's townhouse, Miss Price explains what substitutionary locomotion is. In the cut version, the second nursery scene, where Paul discovers the book, Isle of Nabumbu, gets moved to after the song, Eglantine, which is shortened. In the restored version of the film, the song, Portobello Road, is reinstated to its entire length of 10 minutes, including the dance sequence, which depicted all of the armed forces from the various countries in the British Empire that fought in World War II by demonstrating some national dance steps, such as this section, which demonstrates Beric Tignatian dance from India. Also reinstated was the scene 
when Mr. Brown tells Swinburne the debate won't belong to royalty, and the kid pushes through the door. And Mr. Brown refuses the bookman's offer to swap sections from the book. The scene taken in Mrs. Hobday's store, where she tells Mr. Brown that he should marry Eglin Time Place. And the conversation is overheard by Reverend Jelk. After Mr. Brown leaves the house, the song Nobody's Problem is reinstated. However, no orchestral track existed, so the studio recorded a new one. Unfortunately, the film footage for the song A Step in the Right Direction, which Edwin Time Price sings while learning how to ride a broom, was never found. However, the team did find the stereo audio track and made a valiant effort to use this along with still photos taken of the actions to piece together the scene. This footage can be viewed on the bonus features of the DVD. This is really just a version of editing. The original editing was performed by Irvine Cotton Eugene Warburton, a Disney veteran who began working for Walt Disney Studios in 1955 and won an Academy Award for his editing on Mary Poppins. I wonder how the film would have been edited if Walt had still been alive. Being released as a Christmas film for 1971, Disney created many pieces of merchandise to go with the film, including books, puzzles, paper doll sets, lunch boxes, Viewmaster reels, and of course, Horseman's self-propelled action bin which moved in every direction and included a doll replica of Angela Lansbury as Miss Price. I enjoyed the plot and music of this film. The special effects are amazing and the acting is superb, but where it falls down for me is in the editing of the story with the appearance of some scenes that do not appear to carry the plot and in my mind, should have hit the cutting room floor. The clarity of the plot and subplots can change drastically depending on which cut version you watch, but the fully restored version can become tedious in parts. Having said that, I love this film and have watched it numerous times. I fully recommend it, especially the fully restored version where you're able to understand more the World War II aspects and can follow the subplots. Bed knobs and Broomsticks is available on iTunes, YouTube, Amazon Prime, Google Play, and of course, DVD. With the fully restored version and bonus features, the original 1971 Radio City Music Hall Cut is on Disney+. Plus. Thank you so much for watching the final part of my deep dive trilogy in the Disney's film Penelms and Broomsticks. If you like this kind of Disney historical 50th anniversary content, please like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. This concludes my look at Disney in 1971. I look forward to seeing you next time as I explore Disney in 1972. TTFN, ta-da for now.